Uh, and maybe this should be a good title. I like long titles. God's thought of oneness, common, not merely Christian. Um, and if you will, let's go ahead and turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Um, if you read in the Old Testament, <clears throat> you will notice that, sorry, sorry again, <clears throat> it took artisans, just genuine artisans to form the candlestick and really all of the objects in relationship to the, to the tabernacle. <clears throat> But um, that candlestick is made of solid gold. But in truth, it's made by the hands of man. And, but the light that comes from it and what it truly represents is from God. It is not just light, light. It is a reality it, and helps us to come to certain realities. Um, so that light's eternal, and that means that the lamp stand um, is really just a lamp stand or a candlestick that holds the light, as it were, and it exists as a vessel. That's its purpose, and that purpose is that it might show forth, that it might show forth. So we get that here in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and beginning with verse 4. <clears throat> in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. All right, so if you know anything about the context of 2 Corinthians 4, beginning with verse 1, and then you realize that 2 Corinthians 3 is the context also, and there it talks about <clears throat> um, seeing Jesus face to face and being conformed to that same image. And this just continues that on in that it's not just talking about the gospel of salvation. It's talking about, let's see, where is the wording here? Lest the light because remember we're talking about the candlestick. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God? The glorious gospel, who is the image of God? The glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. You getting it? That's, that's what it's trying to communicate, okay? And then it carries on. <clears throat> Verse 5. For we preach not ourselves. Okay, uh, now, you know, how many Christians have you ever heard or how many preachers have you ever heard say we don't preach ourselves? But do they preach Christ? And I'm not saying that they don't. I'm just saying do they? <laughs> you know, do they preach Christ or are they preaching themselves and Christ, what Christ did for themselves? Anybody see that difference? <clears throat> We, pre we don't preach ourselves. It's not about ourselves. We make all the focus about us. It's about my problems. It's about my life. It's on the earth, by the way. It's about my situation. It's about this and that. And, and it, while those are issues through which Christ can be formed in us, amen, amen, can't he be can worked into us through those things? So, so they're not, not important. Our focus is Christ. Our focus is always that we or they or the Father will get Christ. And so, um, but we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the Lord, and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. Okay? So there is a spirit 
in this relationship that says we don't, we're not talking about ourselves. We're, we're talking about something on a grand scale. And many times we don't, we don't live on that grand scale. We don't think on that grand scale. We, we, don't, we, don't take it, we don't compare anything to the, what we saw in the mount. You know what I mean? We're just too busy just living down here and you know, hoping that God will help us along. And, um, but, but it, not only we do not preach ourselves, but we do address ourselves or view ourselves in light of this grand scale that we have the, that through his image and his nature, we are conforming to that image. Therefore, we are, what, what are we? If we're conforming to his image, what are we? We are children of the king. No, Jesus is the king, so we're not, Je not Jesus' children. We're the father's children. We're not children of the king. We're servants for Jesus' sake. We're doing this for Jesus' sake. For him. That's what he wants. It's for his sake. He wants us to bless others. He wants us to live for God and for others. For God who commanded the light, because remember, that lest they should, lest the light of the glorious gospel, their minds are blinded, lest the light of the glorious gospel, for God who commanded the light, and remember this came right out of chapter 3 in the last verse there, or I think it's the last verse, where it says that we behold him, we're changed into that same image from glory to glory. God commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The light, it keeps saying this light, and but it's not just saying this light, it's talking about the shining forth of this light. Now remember, we're talking about the candlestick. Um, and I'll just say this, there are many, 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 many candlestick verses in the New Testament. They just don't say candlestick. They talk about the light. They're talking about the reality now. This is no longer shadow land. And we're, we're the true tabernacle. We're the temple of God. And these things are having effect in us. And the, the writers of the New Testament were, were building that into us because they were Jews and they understood these things. And they said, this is, this is the pattern. We're talking about the true reality now. And so they're taking those things and molding them into us as the temple of God, the house of God, the habitation of God. But we have this, what do we get out of it? But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of, of the power may be of God, not of us. Okay, and so this is, I mean, I don't know how to say it over and over again, but not of us, and yet, so much is, comes from us, even if they're good ideas, even if they're godly ideas. You, do you do realize that a godly idea may not be God? <laughs> may, not, may not even come from God, but it, it seems godly. It's certainly religious. Not us. The excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. But ye are a cho this okay, so let, now we're going to go to 1 Peter 2.9. You don't have to turn there because we're running short already. Uh, 1 Peter 2.9 says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people. I'll agree with that. But anyway, uh, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Okay, show forth his praises. If you look at that in the Greek, it is not talking about praise and worship. The actual word there for praises is things over which you would praise is what? Oh, okay. Excellencies. His excellencies. To show forth his excellencies. Or the things over which we praise him over that he has. The things that are excellent about him. Okay. 
So this is what a royal priesthood is. We're, every, I think most Christians know that they are, that everybody now in the New Testament is a priest. But all that means, the, I mean, it doesn't really mean anything. It has hardly any effect in anybody's life. But here's what it meant to be a priest. Yes. And that was to show forth his excellencies, whether it be by the altar or the labor or the light or the bread or the incense to show the, the goal, the goal was we are his servants, we're priests. But instead of God emphasizing so much through this New Testament that we're priests, it emphasizes that we're servants. Because that's what a priest is. You understand? Doing what? Serving what? His excellencies and sharing them forth that ye should show forth the praises, the excellencies of him who hath called you out of darkness into his light, into his light. Okay, so we're meant to shine him out as light, not just witness. Big difference, isn't there? There's a big difference between just witnessing for Jesus and shining him forth, all right? Uh, especially as light, as light. <clears throat> so I wrote, since it was in the holy place, not the holy of holies, but in the holy place, which is this section right here with these three um, vessels, since it was in the holy place, the lampstand light was considered to be before the Lord or in front of the Lord. Um, so because our time is short, golly, because I just don't want to stay on this candlestick forever. Um, I'll just give you some scriptures that, <clears throat> um, that confirm that. Exodus 40, verse 24 through 25. Forty, uh, Exodus 40, 24 through 25. And Leviticus 24, 4. Okay. Okay. Um, and Leviticus 24, 4 says this, He shall order the lamps upon the pure candlestick before the Lord continually. Okay, so before the Lord continually. <clears throat> the priest made sure that this stuff was before the Lord continually. It was perpetual. It was a, <clears throat> it was a settled um, dedication, a settled consecration to be, to have what the Lord wanted before him continually. Memorial ministry, there's another name that we use for it, memorial ministry, okay. All right, so you get the blessing of just hearing me read now since, uh, how much time we got? <laughs> Seven minutes, oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, this is something I wrote sometime back actually. There was a light that God wanted coming forth from the instruments, his branches, talking about the candlestick. And he wanted, always, he wanted it always there. The shadow should awaken us, meaning this, this candlestick as just a shadow of who we're supposed to be as the, as the body. <clears throat> uh, the shadow should awaken us to something that is there in God, indistinguish, indistinguishable if not for the shadow. In the Hebrew scriptures, the candlestick is usually translated lamp stands or lamps, but, in the, but the actual translation is not plural. It's always singular. <clears throat> they were gathered together in one, these branches. They lost their individuality. In that sense, they are not merely in union with Jesus, but lost their identity and singleness into him, not for him, uh, into him. <clears throat> the sense of let your light so shine is understood that all proceeds from him. Because if we are the branches of this candlestick, he's the light. 
So our light is him, and it all proceeds from him. Each branch may be giving off its light, but the life and oil that allows light is the same and the same source for all branches. The candlestick had branches, each bearing light, but it never says they gave individual lights, but it is always one light. It was oil for the light. That's the wording, oil for the light, not lights. All is identified and seen in the light of one. The oil was designated as the oil for the light and not for the candlestick to feel full or satisfied or useful in itself or special in itself, but oil for the light. Many are tempted to build a ministry and reputation of themselves or their ministry emphasis instead of to lose all that Christ, all of that, that Christ may gain the glory. They tempted John the Baptist to identify outside of Christ, but he would not do it. You all remember that? To God, the church and Christ are one and not separate shining forth the same character of Christ's light. God wants to see us in the beauty of oneness. And, and I'm going to tell you, that I'm not going to explain it, and I'm just going to tell you that from everything I can see, this is the truth. The beauty of holiness, folks, is the beauty of oneness. And I'm, I know that most people think, oh, no, the beauty of holiness is doing everything right and never make, and being totally sinless and da-da-da-da. But it's not. It's oneness. And folks, oneness can bring about greater lack of sin, if you, want, if you will, if you want to put it that way. <clears throat> um, God wants to see us in the beauty of oneness and in deity, gold, and the light of one nature in all, the, that golden nature in all. He enjoys its brightness and what it shines forth. All right, so... Let me just read out of Ephesians. This is Ephesians 5, 8, and then 10 and 11. For you were sometime darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk. Walk as children of light. Did fulfill this. Be the fulfillment of this. But it's not you. It's Christ fulfilling all of that through you. All we have to do is be a vessel of the oil and the light and and by seeing him and knowing him we realize these things but we can hear them I mean I know I used to hear these things and I'd go you know I'll give you an example when I was in Bible school it was a Bible school with a particular emphasis on everybody who graduated from that Bible school going on the mission field, being a missionary and being a dying seed and falling into the ground and dying wherever they sent you. And I, every time they'd talk like that, I'd go, well, God called me to be a great missionary. I'm in gr a great evangelist. You know, I'm going to be a great evangelist, you know. I don't feel called to do that. What I didn't understand is they weren't talking about a calling to be a missionary or this or that per se. And what I was resisting wasn't the missionary. It was I don't want to give my life. <laughs> that was really, I mean, that was the issue for me. May not be the issue for anyone else who went through that. All right, so uh, walk as children of life, light, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Again, constantly, it's perpetual for the Lord, before the Lord. Uh, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Well, how do you reprove darkness? Turn on the light. Turn on the light. All right, so again, something I wrote. As branches of him, now we are light in the Lord. Now we are to walk, not some Christians walk, not, not as some Christians walk, but as in oneness with the candlestick reality. We are to function as branches with his life filling us and his light emanating from us. All right, 
So final verses that I'll read are, is uh, Matthew 5, 14 through 16. It informs us that the shining takes, that takes place is done in a way that it brings glory to God and not ourselves. You are the light of the world. The city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light, that's Christ, so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. All right, so the good works here, he's not calling us to do what we, what we understand to be good works. The good works is the context of this, and it's all about letting your light shine. Okay, and that light is Christ, and we haven't seen, I don't even know that we'll, in fact, we, we won't. We won't get to the, the full discovery that that light, when the priest comes in there, I mean, if you walked into a dark room, and you walked into that room, and you didn't know anything, and you didn't have any light or anything, you could stumble around and knock holy things over and all kind of stuff. You don't know where you're going. The darkness, the absolute ignorance of what's in his heart is like us stumbling around. And it says that in what? Uh, Isaiah 60-something there, you know, 66. Um, but when that light is lit, then you begin to see. And you, you, you see the, the bread. And you see that the bread on that table. And, of course, the light shines on itself, too. And you understand who you are with him. You're the holder, the stand, the lampstand, the light holder, the light bearer, but it shines on the bread and you understand that, that the relationship with that bread is that you're supposed to take it and put it in you for life. And then, you know, you also see the altar of incense and what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to take that fragrance in for joy and blessing. But it's not just supposed to be on your outside or just on your soul. It's something of him that you take in. Just like the father. Think about the father. The father enjoys. It's a sweet savor of Christ to God. And so it brings him joy, that selfless one, whether it's on the altar where he's dying and the savor is going up, or the altar of incense, which the fire came off of that altar over there, and it's called an altar. But this one is not killing something in, in because of sin or something. The altar of incense is the sweet savor of Christ who gives himself. And you're seeing this. You're, you're discovering God by this light when, when it's lit, when that candlestick is lit. You're discovering God. And you're discovering more than that. You're discovering how to relate to him. How to relate to him. Because you wouldn't know. He, he likes stuff you don't, wouldn't have a clue. He's going, you like pickles? Here. You know, you see, you, you know, do you see what I'm saying, though? I mean, it's, we're, we do dumb stuff all the time because we haven't, you know, all the scriptures I've read, we don't have the light that's shining. In this case, it's a light that's shining on to bring us to the reality, not just the knowledge, not just the depth of knowledge. The reality of what's true of our God, the God that we love. But how can we love him when we only serve ourselves and we never serve him what he wants? How can we really say we love him? We love ourselves because of what he can do for us. So anyway, is that, is that enough? Whatever light we have is for glorifying God, not ourselves. We were formed for this purpose. We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. I'm not sure what we presume these good works are that are mentioned here, but as vessels, it is that of allowing Christ to live in us and shine forth from us as the life. So, Father, we just thank you for these little times you do give us. Thank you that... You are huge and so overwhelming. There's so much to you. But thank you that for now you have chosen to give us bite-sized pieces, things that maybe we can take with us all week long and chew on, things that we can be as the candlestick before the Lord with these things. 
so that the light begins to shine on these things and life and your heart and, and our love grows on a proper basis for you instead of what we think is important because we feel so mushy about you at times. Lord, continue to allow us to see your Son, Father. Holy Spirit, continue to allow us to comprehend him as he is and not as we have formed him. In Jesus' name, amen.